And it's a good, good Monday morning. How are you today? Hope you're doing well. I've got a lot on the calendar today doing a couple podcasts, an interview. Gotta get my hair cut. I'm gonna try someone different today. I'm gonna go to 200, my 287th chair today. I go to different places to get my hair cut just to have a different experience every time. And it's kind of a weird little hobby. People say, well, what if you get a bad haircut? I've never gotten, well, maybe I have. I think I've gotten maybe one or bad two haircuts in my life. But I like the experience, not just the cut. And I get that every time I go somewhere different. But let's get going, but first, coffee. Yeah, Ethiopian. For those of you that have never been to this broadcast before, I am a Sultan, and I do this show every morning. And now you can see the sun coming up. This is wonderful. It's a little bit later than usual. I usually start very early while it's yet dark. And I was called the Sultan of Silver for many years in the hair industry because I worked with people with silver, gray, and white hair. And then that just basically just became the Sultan. It became a nickname. And now everywhere I go, that's what people call me. And it has caught on and it defines what I do or defined what I do. And it works. Simple as that. Dude gets his every other day bottle of Kettle One, stops at the convenience store to get his smokes. Right before he pays, he looks at the Mega Millions jackpot. It's $636 million. He says, yeah, you know what? Give me one of those quick picks. He spends $2 and gets a ticket, a lottery ticket. And then before he passes out tonight, he wins $636 million dollars. Isn't that how it always works? Possibly the most important thing I'm going to say this morning right now, and I made sure I'm saying it at the very beginning, when you've had enough of your current situation, financial, relationship, fitness, career, living situation, that you don't get disappointed anymore. You don't get depressed anymore about it, but you rise up and do something about it and create the circumstances to get out. You build the ladder to get out. You'll always remember the day that you turned your life around. That concept is called constructive discontent. Constructive discontent. When you've had enough, and it no longer disappoints you or depresses you, and it gets you to move. Are you at the point in your life where you are constructively discontent rather than destructively discontent? Tobacco Pipes Japan has a Facebook page. That's the name of the company, Tobacco Pipes Japan. Check out photos of dudes smoking pipes. I don't know why I like pictures of just like groups of men just sitting around talking, smoking pipes. And you always wonder what cultures enjoy this manly art and hobby. And one thing I know now is that Japanese men do. TobaccoPipesJapan.com and go to their Facebook page. I'll be wearing their t-shirt real soon. I love it. It's a samurai smoking a pipe. The unhappiest Christian women I've ever seen are followers of Pentecostal and charismatic Christian leaders, televangelists, and pastors. Just look at the memes that they post. Their faith is just a meme faith, a soundbite faith. The happiest women I've ever seen in the world, in the Christian world, I have found, 
are in the Reformed churches. Stable, solid, more logical, not roller coastery, and you know, fingers crossed and wishing and hoping and miracles and everything's miraculous. No. Men, be logical, be stable, be steady. That's the kind of woman you need in your life, if you're going to have a woman. There's a lesson in that. Now, assuming that you're not having kids, or your kids are grown, here's a concept. Remember, I talk about ideas and absolutes. This is an idea. Assuming that you're not having kids, or that your kids are grown, you work five days a week producing great stuff, content, stuff, services, you work your butt off, you work with insane laser focus, and you're prospering, but you only see your mate, your partner, your lover, two days a week. It's kind of like the intermittent fasting version of relationships. Could you do that? And why? Put your comments down below. I asked people that. 71% said yes. 29% said no. So it's about three quarters and a quarter. It's almost three quarters of the people who responded to that said they could do it. The intermittent version of fasting. If you had to choose, what would you rather have? A nice car or a nice house? 10% said a nice car, 90% said a nice house. He hears the silence howling, catches angels as they fall, and the all-time winner has got him by the balls. He picks up Gideon's Bible, open at page one. God, he stole the handle, and the train, it won't stop going. No way to slow down. Jethro Tull. 1971. Remember when ambulances looked like hearses but only red? I'm glad those days are gone. And you may find yourself living in a shotgun shack. You might find yourself in another part of the world. You may find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile. You may find yourself in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife. And you may ask yourself, how did I get here? The Talking Heads. I don't know what year that was. Tell me what year that was. I have acquaintances that are pagans, Satanists, atheists, agnostics, and everything that I am not. However, each one will still greet me with a handshake, a bro hug, hold a door for me, and reach out to another hurting man if I am not able. This, for me, came with age. There's a lesson in there. Don't be so quick to rule people out for their beliefs, but for their actions. As I've said for the past year, Believe what people do, not what they say. Does that make sense? Ever notice that people who drown out and escape life with alcohol, they have the TV on constantly, they have, always have to have background noise, noise in the background. They can't handle silence, they're very defensive, they're quick to anger, they're angry when they're drunk. They're not happy, they're angry. They blame everyone else, they're always a victim, and they can't eat in restaurants that don't serve alcohol. You know people like that. You might even be someone like that. I hope you're not. The upcoming movie about Laurel and Hardy looks amazing. It's called Stan and Ollie. Google it. I didn't even see the actors. All I saw was Laurel and Hardy. They literally became Laurel and Hardy. Method acting at its best. It's not the employees that you fire that are the problem. It's the ones that you don't fire. 
Dremel tools and their accessories could easily be an addiction. Any fellow Dremel nerds out there, comment down below. And with that, I'm going to say, have a great day. I'll catch up with you soon. I have two podcasts and an interview to do later on today uh, and some sponsored videos to be catching up on. Check out the links below for the sponsors. I appreciate it. They appreciate it. Finish your coffee.